Let me say it again. I believe health care is a right of all people. I will fight for a Medicare for all single payer system. Second of all, all right, you want to talk about rationing? You got 29 million people in this country who have no health insurance. How's that for rationing? They can't go to that. Welcome to the MTC Report, the news behind the news with journalist Mark Taylor Canfield. We offer you independent voices and underreported stories about topics you won't hear anywhere else. Join us as we delve into the deeper issues behind the news stories of the day on the MTC Report. Go anywhere. The MTC report with Mark Taylor Canfield continues next. This is Mark Taylor Canfield. I'm a journalist. I uh, write at the Capitol Hill Times. I also blog at Daily Coast. I'm vice president of Democracy Watch News. And I also appear regularly on the Jeff Santos Show, broadcasting from Boston. As we celebrate our independence this year, it was recently July 4th, which is Independence Day in the United States, it would be wise for us to heed the current calls for freedom in our country. Freedom from big money's corrupting influence on politics. Freedom from government surveillance. Freedom from unjust laws and from economic, environmental, and social inequity. Freedom from discrimination and from prejudice. And freedom from corporate control of our media, our political system, and our elections. One of the basic principles of the U.S. Bill of Rights in the U.S. Constitution is the guarantee of freedom of speech and freedom of the press. Believe me, folks, this has saved us from some very horrible, despotic, totalitarian, fascist-type takeovers. Unfortunately, the folks in Italy under the rule of Il Duce, uh, Mussolini, did not have that protection, nor did the folks uh, under Chancellor Hitler in Germany, the post-Weimar Republic. Neither did the folks under Hirohito in Japan, that empire, have these rights, which is why so many people were executed, uh, were disappeared, tortured, and ended up in concentration camps. Well, we should be very thankful for the fact that we have the U.S. Constitution and these guarantees in the First Amendment. If you want to get more information about the U.S. Bill of Rights, go to billofrightsinstitute.org. Many of the ideas in our Constitution came from the writings of an Englishman, John Locke, during one of the revolutions against the monarchy in England at that time. He defiantly declared that men were born with the right to freedom and opportunity. Locke proclaimed that the sole purpose of government is to promote the welfare of the people, not to placate the king and his aristocratic friends. That's a key point. So these revolutionary ideas about human rights had their origin actually in the English Magna Carta signed by King James in 1215. And then during another uprising, King Charles was, was forced to endorse the Petition of Rights, another document. During the Revolution of 1688, Parliament passed the original Bill of Rights. And though Britain never abolished the monarchy, its noble families lost much of their power to the Parliament. And though it took nearly 300 years in the United States, Eventually, slavery was outlawed, and women won the right to vote and to participate in the leadership of our nation. Throughout the struggle for independence, freedom of the press has served as a bulwark against authoritarianism. In fact, the First Amendment to the Bill of Rights in the U.S. Constitution inextricably connects this liberty with the all-important right to freedom of speech. Quote, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press, 
or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. So given this brief background information, one fact should be alarming to the residents of the United States. Because according to Reporters Without Borders, an international advocacy group for freedom of the press, the U.S. is currently ranked 43rd in the world in terms of press freedom. In other words, there are 42 other countries in the world where reporters have more access to information about the workings of their own government and more protections under the law as a journalist. Now, if this shocks you, it should. The U.S. is ranked behind South Africa and Slovenia. Norway is currently ranked number one in terms of press freedom. This is according to Reporters Without Borders World Press Freedom Index for 2017. Reporters Without Borders is not saying that the U.S. has a media partially controlled by the state as may exist in countries like Russia, Iran, or China. It's the ownership of most media by a small group of large corporations that has reduced our access to information and lowered our ranking on the World Press Freedom Index. The Republican members of the Federal Communications Commission have been allowing this consolidation of ownership to happen despite the protests of press freedom advocates. According to two suppressed university studies, the University of Delaware and Fordham University, corporate consolidation of media ownership does not result in more local media coverage as the FCC had claimed. One research study by FAIR, Fairness and Accuracy in Reporting, found a loss of minority and female ownership of news media companies due to consolidation of corporate media ownership. Now, I testified before the FCC about these studies, which the commission claimed to have no knowledge of. I found that very ironic since it was the FCC who had actually commissioned these studies. And you can read my article about this at truthout.org. The government's persecution and prosecution of whistleblowers has also had a negative effect on the U.S. ranking in terms of press freedom. The greatest censorship and propaganda, however, often comes from commercial news media. A prime example of this came when uh, the major mainstream corporate media proclaimed Hillary Clinton as the Democratic Party's nominee for President of the United States before the California primary. The truth is that neither Bernie Sanders nor Hillary Clinton had enough delegates to secure the nomination at that point. So Clinton and the U.S. corporate media were relying on unpledged superdelegates to put her over the top. There was also an effort to convince you that Donald Trump could never become president of the United States. And this was also perpetrated largely by MSNBC, CNN, and other corporate media outlets. It's not one thing. This is a pattern a pattern of divisiveness, of a very dark and in many ways dangerous vision of our country where he incites violence. I have taught the doctors who have told me that people walk in the door extremely sick. And doctors say, why didn't you come in here six months ago and first felt your symptoms? And people said, I had no health insurance. Or I had a high this doctor. is the MTC Report, the news behind the news, with journalist Mark Taylor Canfield. We can have a world-class health care system without waiting lines. pushed on something which is obviously uncomfortable, like what these women are saying, um, he immediately goes to uh, denying responsibility. Uh, and it's not just about women. He never apologizes or says he's sorry for anything. I hope that as we move in the last weeks of this campaign, more and more people will understand what's at stake in this election. It really does come down to what kind of country we are going to have. So sad when she talks about violence at my rallies and she caused the violence. Don't go anywhere. The MTC Report with Mark Taylor Canfield continues.
I'm Mark Taylor Canfield, and this is the MTC Report. I'm a journalist and a musician. I write at the Capitol Hill Times, I blog at Daily Coast, I've blogged at the Huffington Post, and Op-Ed News, and a lot of other places. I write articles at truthout.org. I am a vice president of Democracy Watch News, which you can follow on Twitter and Facebook. And I am also a regular guest on the Jeff Santos Show, broadcasting from Boston at revolutionradionetwork.com. As a U.S. journalist, I'm not proud of our low ranking on the Reporters Without Borders World Press Freedom Index. We must do better than this. We should be doing better than this. Freedom of the press is a mainstay for this U.S. Constitution in this country. There must be an effort by all journalists, editors, publishers, etc. to push the envelope on issues of freedom of press in the United States. We must do much better in this country to secure the liberties that our founders intended for us. As members of this community, we can all do much more to help support and fund alternative media projects like Democracy Watch News, uh, Democracy Now, Free Speech TV, and other places like Truth Out. Without independent voices in the media, we can't truly say that we have a free press in this country. The United States of America was the first nation on the planet to establish freedom of religion and freedom of the press as a basic tenet in its own constitution. I'd say that we have a special obligation to protect these rights at all times. As members of the community, we can all do much more to help support and fund alternative media projects. There are all sorts of independent, open-minded, real journalism out there that needs to be supported that's not getting support, and they don't have a major advertising budget, so you may never have heard of them. You've got to go out and find them. You have to be an active consumer when it comes to media. You have to go online and find the people who deserve your support. No longer can you afford to sit back and be programmed daily by hours and hours of CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, whether, you know, fill in the blank. This is a new era in the history of the planet. With the communication devices we have, your mobile devices, the online news networks, and they are actually starting to get support. So look for those people, look for people who are independent, who practice um, ethics, who don't plagiarize, who don't uh, report falsehoods, who don't have conflicts of interest, okay? And I know that's difficult to find these days in the news media. And perhaps as Jello Biafra said himself, uh, it might be time to stop complaining about the media and become the media. There are some very amazing people online we're doing independent media broadcasts from their living room, from their kitchen, on their laptop webcam, and they're doing great work. This is Mark Taylor Canfield, and I'm urging you to support freedom of the press in this country. Make sure that the First Amendment to the United States Constitution is respected by our government, by the corporations, and by individuals in this country, because it's very, very important. Freedom of the press is one of the most important foundations in any democracy. This is Mark Taylor Canfield for the MTC Report. Thanks for tuning in and please subscribe to my channel. We have uh, over 325 original videos now uploaded at the MTC Report, along with hundreds of movies that you can watch for free, uh, all sorts of interesting programming, music, uh, my radio plays, the Nick Savage Private Eye series, all sorts of stuff up there. My uh, um, my media work with Tom Hartman, Norman Goldman, Mike Malloy, um, Jeff Santos. It's all up there for you to enjoy and share. So please support alternative media. And thanks for watching and checking out the MTC report. And we'll see you next time. Stay tuned. He went after a federal judge born in Indiana but who Donald said couldn't be trusted to try the fraud and racketeering case against Trump University because his parents were Mexican. So it's not one thing, this is a pattern. My point is, Chuck, there's massive rationing in America. It is rationing based on money. If you don't a have money, spin. You it's a lot of hype. And Hillary is nervous. She answers twice. It's really.
violence, where he applauds people who are pushing and pulling and punching at his rallies. That is not who America is. I have talked to doctors. There are people walking the door extremely sick. The doctors say, why well, didn't you come in here six months ago and first felt your symptoms? And people said, I had no health insurance. This is the MTC Report, the news behind the news, with journalist Mark Taylor Canfield. We can have a world-class health care system without waiting lines. Report, the news behind the news with journalist Mark Taylor Canfield. I've been criticized saying that, let me say it again. I believe health is a right of all people. I will fight for Medicare for all single basis. Second of all, all right, you want to talk about rigidity? You got 29 million people in this country who have no health insurance. How's that for rigidity? They can't go. Now here's a place you always need a lot of friends. 